Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're already up here in the air in the Kodiak, moving along on a little VFR flight direct to Ottawa. Currently, we're just passing Peterborough, and we're gonna jump into all the things we've configured. So coming into SPAD.next, you're gonna notice we're on 0912.66, so we're still in the alpha build, but soon a beta is, uh, is supposed to be coming so as always want to make sure we go into settings go into devices check our MIDI devices make sure we got MIDI enabled X touch mini and X touch output so we can turn the lights on so those things are all set up so we are ready to go don't forget to check out the other MIDI videos for more in-depth on how to do that so to find our MIDI device we're gonna come on over here to the panels and we're gonna look for our X Touch Mini. As always, if you just want to grab a hold of this snippet and get moving, no worries. Click on a button, go to online snippets. Make sure you have the X Touch Mini highlighted and you want to go for I guess all devices. Now we're gonna to come to our X Touch Mini complete device. And we're going to find for these aircraft, we're looking for the Microsoft Flight Sim Kodiak G1000 NXI Touch. So there you go. Go ahead, grab that 6169 for the snippet number. Uh, just about every paint of the defaults should be available. If you don't see it, it's because your paint doesn't match. You have a add-on livery, so make sure to come up and uncheck only for this aircraft. Uh, so that you'll get more options as you saw just happen here. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to grab the G1000 X Touch and we're going to replace all events for all pages. So button zero, which is pushing the first knob in, we've got that set up to perform our heading sync, right? So when we're inside of the plane, and if our heading dial is way off, then when we press that knob, it will sync the heading back for us. For the knob itself, we're using the AS1000 PFD heading uh, increment and decrement. So we're sending the actual um, H events into the system. And then that way it'll do all the same key events and it'll do everything that the working title NXI is supposed to do. So that's perfect. So then when we come to the next knob, we're gonna find that we've got our PFD course increment, PFD course decrement. And for that button press, we've got the push course. So the same thing as pushing the course, it should sync the radial that you are on. So button number two with knob number two, that's our altitude select knob. And for this, we're using something that we showed before. And that is going to toggle this altitude knob session variable that we created, which has the ability to go from a zero to a one, and then it'll roll over because we did an increment. The purpose of this is it's gonna let us toggle between 100s and 1000s. So on the altitude knob on some of these panels, you'd have the scroll by a thousand or scroll by a hundred. So we're going to let you emulate that. So for that button, we come to this knob and that's where you'll see what we've done. So using that altitude knob session, so when it equals zero, we're going to send the AS1000 uh, autopilot altitude increments by 100. And when it equals a one, we're gonna do it by a thousand. So when we come back in and we look in here, you can see right now as we turn that altitude knob, it goes up by one hundreds. And if we were to click on it, now it's going to go up by a thousand at a time. So when we come to the next knob, we've got, uh, I wrote it as pitch, but effectively it's the wheel. Uh, so the wheel in here is used for uh, wheel up, wheel down, and it's used for speed, flight level change, 
Uh, it's also used for VS and the actual pitch, which we've assigned nothing to. So that would be the fourth button to go along with the fourth knob. Uh, instead, what we're relying on is the nose up and nose down. If you don't like the chosen direction, just flip these two around on the clockwise turn. And don't forget, it's just as easy now to use the change trigger to clockwise event. So you can flip that, grab the other one, flip it, and away you go. So for our next knob, I decided to use this for barrel. We have to change barrel a lot when we're flying on that sim, and why not just give it a knob? So for that, we're using the PFD barrel increment and decrement. Then what we've did for its button is we gave it the send barometric standard pressure. The problem with trying to send the barometric pressure inside of the sim is you have to do it from the PFD options button. And so yeah, it'll say standard barrow, and the moment you move your barrow, it resets. But if you send the standard barrow, you'll notice it just resets it to 2.9 or 9 or 2. And there's no event to emulate that uh, inside of the G1000. So next to the barrow, we are using the range because it's nice to be able to scale the range on the MFD real quick. And I figured why not use a knob for that. Coming over to the next knob, the one labeled calm. So what we've done here is we've set up another knob session uh, value. So I've created a local variable. To do that, you would add action, change data value, and create new local variable. Now we've shown this already in a dedicated video about how to flip it, uh, so we'll just jump over. But we're using this to toggle that variable, and that will allow us to change what we do with the knob. If we hold the knob for longer than one second, this will send the AS1000 PFD COM push event. And so hold this for one second and you'll switch from controlling COM1 to controlling COM2. You're going to find that when the knob value equals zero, we're going to increment and decrement the large value, so the non-fractional value or the large portion of the knob. When it equals one, so when we've push the button and toggled it, then we'll control the small or fractional variable of the COM frequency. We went ahead and we did a copy and paste. So we took our COM knob, we copied it, uh, we pasted it here, and then we made a new variable, nav knob, and we went ahead and did the same thing, send the PFD nav push event. On the knob itself, we did the same thing. We copied, paste, replaced the COM knob with nav knob, zeros and ones, and replaced the COM large increment with nav large increment. So as you can see, now we're controlling the navs. And the same thing goes with that button. If you hold that button for longer than a second, you will change between nav one and nav two. So there you go. So that's what we've got, zero through seven. Those are the knob buttons. Uh, and then the first eight um, encoders that we've got on here. Currently, I've mapped nothing to this, and we're only using the A side. We're not using the B side. So now getting into each one of the buttons. So we went ahead and tried to line things up and made sense. So heading knob, heading mode. So at this point, we could enable heading mode. Now the way this works is we're sending the standard autopilot events, so add action, send simulation event, and we are sending the autopilot heading hold. And we do that with a short press. This could have been button pressed, I left it with a short press, that way in the future long press is available to do something as well. Now we set up the scripted events to turn the lights on and off. And because of the way the X-Touch lights are and they come on and then they go out briefly under the press, some people uh, talked about having some issues where if they didn't press it quick enough, they might lose um, the light and it might stay off. So the, the suggestion given was to check it with an additional condition, which is checking the uptime of SPAD.next running, which is done in seconds. So we've got it to check does 
autopilot heading lock equals one and we added to check if uptime in seconds has any change so basically it's more than it was the last time so every second it's going to run this event uh, to check it so then we set up that the X touch mini note on note zero because it's the first note or button LED um, even though it's button eight or whatever it's zero it's what it is velocity one is on velocity zero would be off control channel zero because that's what mine's set to uh, most are set to this but again you can use the Behringer X-Touch software to check to make sure that that is the channel that is set up for your uh, global channel. So with that, we then copied, pasted, and we changed it to a zero. And then we changed this to note being off and note zero, velocity zero, channel zero. So then we did a copy all events we came to number nine we pasted we changed this to nav hold and then we changed this to nav lock one and then we changed our button to note one and then we did the same thing here we changed to nav lock one and then we came down here and we changed this to note one from note zero so we just kept doing copy and paste so next up We've got our altitude hold, then we put VS, followed by the autopilot master, trying again to keep things kind of grouped. Then we put the yaw damper uh, button and lights, and again, we have LEDs lighting up for those. Then what we did for these two buttons was we put the COM and the PFD, or sorry, the nav, uh, COM and nav swaps from the PFD G1000. And so that'll let us swap our frequencies. And there is a long event. So if you hold it for one second, uh, that will switch you to 121.5 for the emergency frequency, which is kind of cool. So button 16, we come around to this side. Now the level button doesn't seem to really be working very well right now in the Kodiak. Uh, so I put the wing leveler there, seems to be the thing to do. And I have put uh, LEDs following the wing leveler. And again, we changed it to note eight because we're now on the eighth note. So coming around to button 17, we put approach mode on here. And again, same thing, you just copied, pasted, edit the condition, and edit which note you're controlling. It's pretty straightforward, just takes a little bit of time. So we've got our VNAV, so that sends the AS1000 VNAV toggle event, uh, but we read the VNAV button value var uh, which is an LVAR for feedback as to if it's active or not active. Then we've got flight level change. So good old flight level change, followed by the flight director. Then you've got COM1. So this is the transmit. So again, with working with things like VATSIM, it's nice to be able to easily switch between which COM you're transmitting on. Uh, that way you can flip-flop back and forth and have a little bit more control. And of course, being able to listen is also very important. So what you'll find is we went COM1, we went COM2, and now the one that has a little bit more intelligence uh, was the final button where we mapped both or listen to both, receive both. And so to do this, we actually needed a couple of events. So for the LED, we actually added an extra condition. So both COM receive one and COM receive two have to be available to turn it on. And then also both have to receive have to be a zero. So when those uh, are both a zero, then it will turn off accordingly. 
So there you go. So what's important is the button press. So when we press the button, we now have four options that it's going to pick from. So the first option, and everything uses end processing. So once one of these validates, it doesn't try any more until the next button press. First, it's going to check if COM1 is receiving. And if it's not, and COM2 is receiving, then it's going to set them both to 1, because we want both. And vice versa, we're going to make the opposite, where 1 is receiving, 0 is not receiving. We need them both to set to 1. In the case where they're both 1s, and COM1 is the transmitting radio, then we're going to set receive 1 select to 1, and we're going to set received 2 select to 0. So this will disable the both. And then finally, same thing, except both are a 1, and we're transmitting on 2. Then what we want to do is continue to receive on 2 and turn off 1. So when we're looking at our audio panel up here, you'll see now we can easily move between 1 and 2. Just like it does in the plane, it will stay on both when you swap, and then you have to disable the listen on the other. So we come to COM2, we disable it if we don't want it, and we can disable and away we go. So I thought that was pretty neat use of the comms and how to do it. And like I said, you simply push the knob. So here we are dialing up our frequency. We push it, and now we're on the large. And if we hold it, we switch, and now we're on COM2, selecting it. And again, the swap's going to work here for COM2 because it's what's selected. Hold this down, switch back to COM1, select that, and now that's going to do the swap. And we're going to activate, so we go direct. So 3000 is what we can dial down to. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our altitude select. We're going to switch back to the hundreds. Maybe I shouldn't have gone to the hundreds just yet. So 3000 matching our thing. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to enable VPath. And we are ready for VNAV to take control for us. So, so far we got altitude held. We got VNAV armed. Autopilot's on Yaw Damper Flight Director, and we're going to go ahead and go back to COM1. Well, here we are, and we're approaching into the Ottawa's airspace, and let's go ahead and hop inside and see where we're at. We're 30 seconds out from our top of descent, and we can see our uh, vertical V for our glide path, for our V path uh, coming in. So as we're intercepting it, we're going to go ahead and start heading down. So there, altitude goes out, V path is active, the VNAV LED is also active when we look at our panel. So as we're on our way down, we're going to go ahead and pull our power back a little bit so we don't overspeed. So we're currently able to go actually down to 2000 uh, since that will be where the FAF is at Vodal. So again, we would just turn our altitude down to 2000 and away we go. Now that we've been cleared to the Arnav Zulu starting at Volag, we can also arm our approach. So we're going to go ahead and arm the approach mode and instantly nav mode goes out because since it is a Arnav, we're already on the GPS and so it has effectively captured uh, that portion of it. So our autopilot's on, V uh, naving our way down to the altitude V of 2,000 feet, uh, and our glide path 
is armed as well. So here we are. We've started the left-hand turn from Volag to Texan. Uh, we can see that our ghost diamond is now present. So we know that the glide path is above us. Uh, at this point, we're ready to continue down. But for this section, it's 3,000 all the way to Texan. And then what's going to happen is V-Path rearmed itself. And as we get close to our next top of descent, it's going to again bring in our vertical V or horizontal V, I guess, uh, for our V path. So right now we're just managing our speed on our approach. And since we're coming up on Volag and we're now into the white arc, I'm going to pull back the power just a little bit more. And then we're going to go ahead and get our first notch of flaps in. And looking down, 138. So on the next one, uh, we're looking at about 120. And we're already below that speed. So we can go ahead and bring in 20. And that'll be enough for us to do on this flight. So we're going to dial our range in now since we don't need to be this far out. And we can see that our next top of descent is going to take place after Texan, but before Vodul. And that should bring us nicely in. So here you go. The V path is coming in, as is the glide path. And we want to make sure we're going to be ready for as we descend. And it captured the glide path as well. So right at the top of descent, it intercepted both. And we are now on the glide. All right, so here we go. We're on final. We're going to go ahead and fly this down. And of course, we want to bug up. So we're going to reach over and click on our heading knob so that we bug up. So that's ready to go. And at this point, we can also dial up for our missed approach, which would be 3,000 feet direct YOW VOR. So we're going to go ahead and we're also going to dial in our 3000. So that's ready to go. So we're ready to go around if we have to. Definitely a slow approach at 110 knots. Uh, but we'll get there. And here we are at Vodal. And we verify 2000 crossing the FAF. Uh, so that checks, and we're continuing on our approach. Four miles to run. And we can see that our barrel minimums have come up on the display. So we've got all the way down to 570 feet. Under two miles to go. And 300 feet to go to minimums. Start getting ourselves back into the 90s. And minimums, uh, pilot and yaw damper are out. Whoa, it's touchy. That was a little firm. And a little reverse thrust. And we're down. 
Well guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Hope you like these MIDI videos. Hope you like these spad videos. Do me a favor, go ahead, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't, and come along next time. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.